bid you good day and promise you a lively and entertaining discussion for your consideration. I assure you that although the voice that you hear is that of Gaia, you will also hear several internal voices of your own regarding this topic. Voices that come from the past, voices that invite you to visit many relative futures, voices that speak to you from this present or other ones that you may hope for. So our topic today is money, a very important subject to many, a misunderstood subject one that is difficult to comprehend, particularly because it is a very intangible subject. It is very difficult to put your finger on the mark of where money is in the scale of priorities. Of course, it seems vital to every society, past ancient societies as well as the modern present society, and those that you will venture forward with as well. There has always been some unit of exchange, and this has changed variously even as the currencies change from country to country today. The moment you cross from one border to another, many times there is a different currency. One has more or less value than another, more or less desirable, buys more or less of any commodity. And it has always been this way as well. Upon other worlds, just to touch lightly upon the subject, there are also units of exchange. Depending upon whether it is an advanced civilization or one that is not, these also have different values associated with them. In some societies upon other worlds, it is very interesting to note that there is no need to hoard, for instance, for there is plenty of everything, whether it is air to breathe or clothing to wear or shelter of any kind to be had. And so when there is an abundance of all necessary things, there is less anxiety relative to what items will be traded or exchanged or how much value must be associated with them. Upon some worlds, some things do not perish the way they do upon the earth. This also changes the value because perishable items like a life that is, in essence, meeting itself out day by day with some conclusion at some point makes things also have more or less value to the person or the day. But imagine if life were truly everlasting or, for instance, that you lived in your body for as long as you wish to live. It would be much simpler to say, I'll get to it tomorrow, whether it is to pay a bill tomorrow or to earn more or different income, or whether to begin or fund a certain project, because time itself would not be running out. And so that is the first possibility to consider relative to the subject of money upon the earth. Because time is running out upon the earth, money is also always running out or running thin. There is always some perceived deadline relative to how much you have or how long you will be able to keep it or who you will pass it on to when you are done with it or whether you what you have will last enough for a lifetime or more than one person or like that. So part of the difficulty with money is not even money, it is time. So one of the ways to relate to money, perhaps a little bit differently, is that as long as there is time, there is money. As long as there is plenty of time, there is plenty of money or ways to advance it, forecast it, draw it to you. If you can manage to make a little bit more time in your day, 
you can manage to make a little bit more money for your day. If you can manage to squeeze out a little bit more pleasure out of your day, you will also have more pleasure out of the money that you have or keep or earn. So, again, what you do with your day, how you relate to your day, time, the timescape of your day will also lead to more natural thoughts regarding money or those that at least do not lead you to consider how much lack there is. Now I wish you to notice as well that time has been accelerating and for some time. The more that time accelerates, the less time there seems to be in a day. The less time there is in a day, the less money it seems that you have, the less time you have to spend money on, or the more quickly you must dole it out to compensate for the measure of the acceleration of time. So notice the relevance here, so that as you begin to slow, whether it is your breath, or the beat of your heart, or the time of your day, you will also slow how money comes and goes. So you will have it a little bit longer. If you have possession of it a little bit longer, you will be able to do more creative things with it. Speaking of creativity, imagine that someone lends you a simple painting palette and they say, use it as much as you want. I'll be back for it tomorrow. Well, now you have time associated with that painter's palette. And so you may paint as many pictures or walls or objects as you like in that time. Or you may devote yourself to its quality. Either way, you recognize that it is on loan to you. That you must give that back. And so you can be as creative as you like with it while it is in your possession. And if you like, you may take that paint or palette that you have in order to make more of your own. So that is another way to think of money as well. It is yours as long as you have it. Then you will exchange it for something else or exchange it to someone else. And so while it is yours, you may make it as creative as you like. You may engage with it in as many different ways as you like. Now, in this series, then, we will explore not only the subject of money, but the subject of abundance and lack, and even other commodities such as gold or water, or those other things considered of value upon the earth. So we will approach this subject rather broadly. Now, does money actually grow on trees, as the old expression would say? Well, no, perhaps not, although there are some that cultivate certain plants and trees and harvest them that would perhaps argue that point. For the sake of our discussion, we will say that money does not grow on trees. However, that being said, we must also say, acknowledge, that abundance is at the root of all trees. It is at their roots, just underneath the roots, just underneath the surface, helping the tree above ground to grow, giving the appearance, perhaps, that a bountiful tree makes it so that money does multiply, leaves multiply. They do grow on trees because they are supported by the roots and what the roots are able to gain for themselves, to draw in and to sustain. Notice as well that roots do not always even break the surface of the ground or the land itself. They do not become visible. So it is important to know where and when and how to dig up the roots or to nurture them or to feed them so that the tree, money tree, abundance tree or what it is will grow. If you notice that the leaves are growing, that the tree is becoming taller, broader, you will know that the roots are being well fed. And of course, you may look at your life in the same way, using this example. If you feel taller, stronger, straighter, 
in your life, you may assume that what is feeding the roots of your awareness, the roots of your life, that they are also being nurtured from within so that the outer effects are visibly what you prefer them to be. Continuing with the subject then, it is important to note that money has no value of its own. After all, for the most part, most currencies today are made of some form of paper, which is printed from trees and other fibers as well, and ink. It has the value that it is assigned. It has the value that a government, a country, an institution gives to it. And that value can be exchanged. That value can be taken back. That value can become almost anything. And note as well that money is associated with, well, with wealth and worth, self-worth, self-importance. It is associated with wages and salary. And it is also associated with an appreciation for self or an appreciation for life. When there is true appreciation for life, there is an abundant source of all things. That includes, but is not limited to, money. So abundance, then, requires to source, references source. What is the source of all things? What is the source of an abundant life or lifestyle or those necessary things? It comes from the wellness of life. A true appreciation for life, for the breath, for self, for source, for all, brings about it a breath that is an abundant breath, a full breath that, in its own complete cycle of inhalation and exhalation, then brings about a more perfect life and, as well, an abundant life. So do Notice the correlation that I bring to you in this, that even in the breath, the completeness, the wholeness, the complete cycle of the breath, there is abundance, there is wealth, there is wellness, there is wholeness. This is a natural form of abundance. And where all things physical notice and nurture their natural abundance, it will draw to it all other abundant things, natural or otherwise. Of course, money is an artificial form of wholeness or wealth, but it is one in which your beingness, your physical awareness could make the distinction and will, particularly if you teach it, if you instruct it to. Money means different things to different people, so its value will always be somewhat relative. For instance, money holds value as security and as freedom, as esteem and as much, much more. And all of these are relative. So here then we begin with our first new term of the session. I wish to impart to you several terms relative to value. And these values can be applied to the subject of money. Relative value is our first one, which simply means that it is value as compared to something else. How much value does it have if you compare it to something else? Do you still want it if it is compared to something else? Is it the only value? The next term is an assigned value. Assigned value is that which has an X Eternal effect upon value or money. For instance, if you are studying dollars, they have an assigned value given by those that determine currency, what you can spend it on, what it is worth, how you will save it. And so some external force or authority then gives value to that money and you in your own way must respect that or abide by it or not. But the assigned value is not one, in this case, that you will give it. It is already given, whether it rises or falls. The next term is that of perceived value. How do you perceive something? Does it seem very valuable? Well, if you were very hungry, a meal, you would perceive a veal perhaps as necessary. 
And so the value of this, the perceived value, would rise. If you had money and you were very hungry, you would give your money for this. The perceived value would make your life better in some way, it would make the situation better, it would make your moment better, and so the perceived value of all things is for the most part how you determine what you will live or what you will do with your money moment by moment. You perceive it and you perceive others as well relative to it. So you will see that some of the terms that we describe overlap with one another. These are very useful terms because in moments where you are not certain how you feel about money or how you feel about a project or an idea about a thing and yet you are concerned with whether or not you have the money to bring it about or pay for it or sustain it, it might be better for you to consider something's value and thereby assist yourself in making such decisions. The next term is creative value. Well, creativity offers art, life as art or as art form. Creativity offers freedom. Creativity is known to open doors, to invite opportunity. So something with a creative value has a life. In some ways it already has a life of its own. Something that is creative, whether you pay attention to it or not, remains creative. Like a very good idea. Well, it is such a good idea that if you do not act upon it, surely another will. So creativity has not only the life that you share with it or the value that you note about it, but it seems to have a quality of aliveness, a quality that belongs to all that it is. Resourceful value, that is another term. Resources like a savings account, for instance, offer to you security. Now, savings or security are also perceived values. So here we find a term that already overlaps with the previous one. Resources, however, like full pantries, encourage peace. And, for the most part, resources are also known to be useful and practical and like that. So a resourceful value allows then some form of security. Now, money can give you security. If you have quite a fat amount of it sitting somewhere, you may feel more secure. You may feel that you do not need to immediately go find for yourself a job or to earn a living, for you are able to sustain yourself or base your days or your decisions based upon this perceived security. But as most economies have seen now, this rises and falls, and those that believe that they were sitting upon a fat and rich resource have discovered that it is only so in the moment, or only so that have made it appear to be so. So resources are well to be managed. It is well to feel oneself rich in resources, and very resourceful in nature, and what you will go and seek in your own nature and natural abilities. So there is value. There is value in everything that is resourceful. And money, when seen as a resource, can be just that. But remember, as we have already shown, that it is relative, that it has only perceptions associated with it, that you do not assign its value, and that only when it remains creative does it remain alive and have more lasting longevity in your life? Another form of value is a future value, which we could also call an investment value, for instance. An investment is something that you are waiting and willing to wait for something that you believe will grow if you will be patient a little bit. You are willing to stake a future moment upon it, or you are willing to sacrifice in some way the present moment in favor of a future moment that may become more rich or more creative for you. 
So a future value of something is a value that you give to something or by agreement you take the assigned future value that someone will give you and stake your beliefs upon it, your reality upon it. If you will buy for yourself such a portfolio as they will say, well, tis only worth this much today, but if you will wait one year or ten or what it will be, surely it will be worth that much. So here then, your beliefs, your opinions, your knowledge, your wisdom, all of this affect how you feel about the future. If you feel very positive about the future, you will then consider the value of a future or a future investment to be very worthwhile where you are concerned. If you do not trust the present or even the future or even tomorrow, you will not be as apt to trust in this kind of value. So the future value to some degree also is determined by how you relate to your present moment, your present fears, your present creativities and all that is associated with it. Do you take as true your internal markers or thoughts or intuition or instead do you look to the major economies of the world and thereby trust these external sources or resources to determine how you feel about the future. This discussion is not truly about the future, though we may touch upon it in a later segment. It is more to do with money, the value that you give it, and how you approach it, how you use it, how you spend it, so that you will feel in your own stead more frank, more comfortable in these times that have been already labeled as difficult or challenging or times of shortage. You see, this is one of the reasons why we approach this subject now. Because if you will see money as short, you will also see other resources as short supply. If you see yourself challenged by money now, and time is short and resources are short, then surely the challenges will either continue or expand. So it is Gaia's desire that you have your natural abundance of creativity, of thoughts, of wisdom, so that you will draw to you not only those things that you need, but those things that are creative, exciting, delightful. As we continue then, there are other forms of value that are certainly worth considering. The next one would be a fair value. What is the fair value that something has? Something that may be too rich for someone is not entirely attractive to another at all. What is its fair exchange? Who determines what price tag something has and whether it has the same worth to everyone or not? So a fair value has to do with an exchange. What would you be willing to exchange for that thing? Must it have equal value? Must it have a certain merit? Must it come with the good opinion or certain promises of others? All things have different values, and so only two or more can determine what is fair. So it is difficult for one person alone to determine what has fair value. But when there are two, you will either have two minds or thoughts that are opposite, opposing, or you may have two that concur and say, ah, that is a very fair price. Why? Because I have compared it to something else. And that comparison then leads me to know or to believe that this is a fair price to pay. And so within you there is the knowing what is fair for you, and what is a given fairness. And that is based upon a certain level of exchange, an exchange of value. Another form of value is called, well, recompense, if you like. And it is based upon the very law of recompense. Another name for this law, one that I least prefer, but it is one that is valuable for you to know, is that it is karmic. Recompense is 
karmic. So recompense value or karmic value. And in this case, you will determine what is an adequate or satisfactory return of something. For instance, a karma in which you have had very little to yourself in another life. And so in this life, you may say, I deserve that. I have gone without for a very long time. I deserve this or that, the experience or the thing, or what it will be. You use the law of recompense to tell yourself that you are worthy of the experience or the thing, that you have drawn it to yourself purposefully. Likewise, sometimes money goes right through your fingers, as they say. Like water, you could not hold on to it at all. And perhaps you will say to yourself, well, maybe I was not made to have it. Maybe that is where it had to go. Maybe in some way I owed it to another time, place or person. And that is why it flowed through me. So the value of recompense is to find adequate or satisfactory returns for money or things that have value. Another example may be something that has been in your family for a very long time, but it did not truly belong to you. It simply came by you. And so this very law of recompense, although you hold something of great value, you may determine that it is of higher value or even necessary to someone else. Perhaps it has come from their family or their collection or perhaps from another country where it would better sit there. All of these are examples of the same law. Another value then is, well, three names we will give to this one. A sentimental value, a symbolic value, or even a spiritual value. Here we assign to it all three, making little distinction between them, but giving by example that you will determine for yourself. The value here represents in some way an attachment to the past or hope and faith and then, yes, the spiritual quality. So here the value must in some way be meaningful. It must have meaning and be meaningful in some way. And of course, spiritual moments have meaning. You can carry them into the next moment or into the next life. Symbols carry that same value and sentimental things, perhaps those things that have been handed down to you, also have this value. A doll, a jewel, something that has been in your family for a very long time and is given to you for safekeeping has a certain value to you that it may not have for another. So this kind of value must also then be meaningful. Perhaps it is something that reminds you of someone else and so you say to yourself you must have it or you must keep it. Regardless of how much money it could be worth if you were to sell it, you must keep it because that is where its value is. Another form of value then is quite different and we will call this one a credit value or an external value. And again, as an assigned value, this one has a truly external quality as well. This is the value of what is associated with your name or what is associated with your numbered accounts and such. What can be credited to you at any given moment. What assets belong to you. Of course, these then are given to you by lawful means. If they are your assets, you may claim them. They have your name associated with it. There are numbers and accountings associated with it. This kind of value rises or falls or collects in the aggregate as it would be. And the value then is more than just to you. However, it is how the world sees you. How valuable does the world see you? Because as you know, the external world measures you. It will size you up by your fortune or the decisions that you have made or how you have carried yourself or like that. So here is another external value then. Subjective to you, 
objective where the world is concerned and you will find yourself toggling between them at times considering yourself only as valuable as the rest of the world sees you or understands you and at other times thinking only of the subjective that you know the value of worth or your self-worth and you will not be measured by the conditions of the external world however because the world or the world economies plays by this rule, this rule of law, this game as well, to some degree you will not be able to completely remove yourself from that process. Another value is a random value. And a random value is simply a haphazard opinion of value based upon a temporary thought. If the thought arises, I need that, I need a new pair of shoes. Well, it is random to the moment. Your eyes have spotted something lovely of value, something that glamorizes the moment, and in that moment you wish to seize it and participate with it. Later you may have changed your mind, or its relative importance may have changed, but in that moment a random thought has entered, and that random thought wishes to be acknowledged and it wishes to be credited for being acknowledged by a certain value or perhaps a spending habit or a trait or like that. These random thoughts then lead to random value, value that changes from one day to the next or one item to the next, one person to the next, one career and on and on. Therefore, these must be in some ways monitored. It would be well to rein in these randomized thoughts, to understand them well, to understand where do they come from, can they be tamed, are they wild and to the moment, must I follow them when they come, if I ignore them, must I ignore them all the time. Random value thoughts are a little bit like small children that want a new toy. And of course, as you know, sometimes it is well to say yes, and at times it is the behavioral habit that must be inculcated to the child, and it must be better not to say no, but to show the relative value of something else. Very similar to that, but different enough that we will note it, is the value associated with frivolousness, so frivolous value. That is money that can be burned, as they say. Let's have a go of it. Let's have a day of it. Let's have a weekend getaway. Matters not what the monies were committed to in the past or any logic associated with it prior to the moment. It is simply a frivolous moment. And in that moment, the money itself has no value or is given no other thought other than the frivolous thought that says, yes, let's. Let's do it. Let's get it or what it will be. So similar to the random value, but even more frivolous in nature than that. And again, this here that you would perhaps take as a negative, I will tell you is quite positive. Because if this frivolous value can be linked to creativity, for instance, so that it is a creative value, the ability to take a chance, the ability to feel so right and so positive about life that one can be frivolous in the moment, creative in the moment, knowing that the natural abundance of life will replenish, will replace, then it is well to nurture this side as well. Then it is an art of life, one that did not divvy and put into small little boxes every penny and where it must go. The last one that we will examine for the day, then, is charitable value. Where does charity come from? Where does the desire to share with another, whether it is your part or your monies, your name, your investment, your credit, what you have collected, what part of you feels charity toward another? What is it that offers you to give your money to another in a charitable moment, whether it is to put it into the hat of a passerby, a street musician, for instance, a charitable institution, or what it will be. There is value associated with giving. 
and the values associated with that then have to do within you there is a volunteer spirit within you there is a need to be a service to others to lend your awareness your truth to others and this has a value as well this value is impartial within you there is a part that is within you that simply wishes and knows that there is enough for everyone whether it is food or money or resources and this impartial nature within you wishes to share with others now the downside of this is that this particular value is also associated with a certain self-importance and even with guilt. So if you feel so self-important, then you will feel that you must give to charities or you must have your own name associated also with being philanthropic or having a giving nature or being of service to others. But it is not true charity then but the way in which you wish to be perceived or the way in which you relatively see yourself as being part of the world. Likewise, guilt. Perhaps you did not give when you had it before and now you have it again, so you feel that you must. Or there are others near you that are all giving and so you feel that you must do the same in this regard as well. And so it is important where charities, charitable values come, that you will notice as well, where is the value? Where does it sit within you? Which thought? If you cannot find it, you may retrace your steps regarding some of the other values that we have spoken of, and you will more than likely find it there. We have given only an overview of all of these values here, because for the most part the topic remains money how to get more money or how to keep it, use it, spend it, replenish it and like that. However, as we have said again, money has no value, none whatsoever. And so the only way in which we may give money enough value that we can even examine it as a topic is to see what value it has been given, where it has gotten it, where it keeps it, how it loses it, where the value will stay and how to use it. In order to more fully understand this subject, I would say to you that it is important to begin to experiment with money, to experiment with the variety of values associated with it because we will continue to explore this topic in a variety of ways, digging up some of the roots of abundance, as we said earlier, and also taking a look at the economies of the world and the future economies of the planet and what direction money itself will take. So as we continue to develop this particular subject, I will give to you an exercise. It is a simple exercise and one that you may use at relative times. If you have a thought in mind of something that you would truly want, something of importance, relative importance, something or someone, a project or an idea, a vision, it can be almost anything that you perceive requires money in order to proceed or something that has been stuck in your memory bank for some time, a wish that has not been fulfilled, and the reason that you believe that it has not been fulfilled is because there has not been enough money to credit to the project. This would be an excellent example to use for this exercise, for this experimenting, but again I tell you it can be almost anything. And so you will want to determine the value of something relative to what is the satisfaction or the fulfillment that it can offer to you in the present. That is a way to begin. And so relative to this idea or this project or this thing, what satisfaction or fulfillment can it offer to you? 
you will notice that its value increases or decreases when you consider whether it is satisfaction or fulfillment that you wish. These two words will sound synonymous to you, but you will notice rather quickly that they are not. Satisfaction, for instance, can be applied to the future. It can be applied to the past and it can be somewhat applied to the present. So for instance if you had always wished to go to college, to go to university but were unable to do so because you did not have the time or the adequate funds or the experience of life did not allow it and now you have it so that you can return and have this experience after all in essence you will have the satisfaction of returning to a past moment and yet finding a fulfillment of the moment in the present so here by definition then satisfaction allows you just enough information or knowledge to travel to past or present or future in order to find a moment, a thing, a project, in order to fulfill it in some way. So the money may give you satisfaction. The fulfillment comes from the experience. The value is in both. However, it is a different value. And you may apply some of those that we have mentioned earlier to find which one is most true for you. Satisfaction relates to a certain knowledge or information. Fulfillment relates to joy. Joy is only possible in the present. So you will not return to the past and feel joy there because the feeling of joy exists in the now. It is the prize of being in the now. It is a prize of living in the present moment and finding that you and life fulfill a prophecy because you have both joined in the now. Again I tell you that both of these can be related to money but in different ways. In order to continue this experience or this experiment with some thing or a project it would be important to want or choose something that can live on its own merit. In other words if the only way that you think it can live is if you won the lottery, then it has no life of its own. If you must say, well, surely I would want that, but the only way that I can have it would be from the lottery, then it has no life on its own. It has not enough merit on its own. And in essence, you are not giving it or yourself enough credit if you believe that that is the only way that it can come about. Now, of course, this is a simple expression in your time. Yes, win the lottery and you can have this or you can have that. However, almost everyone knows the astronomical odds of winning such a prize. And so when this expression is used, it is simply another way to say, well, there is something else that I cannot have. There is something else that is impossible to attain, or at least impossible for me. In order then to bring about the experience of value and of abundance, and perhaps even the monetary funds by which to complete a wish, a desire, or a project then, something must be made possible. If you will only keep it in a column called impossible, then that is where it will remain. And you will say to yourself again and again, I am either not worthy of this, or I am not very good at manifesting, or I do not deserve abundance, or any other number of illogical and inconclusive thoughts associated with perhaps a very viable and creative project. So the next part of the assignment then is to allow that which you want to live to live. Give it life. Give it breath. Let it breathe on its own. Even if it is a written statement on a paper, let it breathe on its own. Give it at least that much life. Give it an idea. Let it exist as a thought. Let it exist as a statement that wants to have more form 
around it. Let it live in two-dimensional space rather than three-dimensional space. Let it live in the fifth dimension. Let it live as it chooses to or as you choose to allow it. But do give it at least the breath of life, at least the chance to succeed. The next step, ask yourself, tell yourself, if money had not been invented, how else might this idea or this project come into being? You see, because again it is an inconclusive thought that anything that needs to be must be brought into being with money. And yet you know that is not so. It was not money that brought your life into being here. It was brought into being by the beautiful and perfect biology of life and desire, of offering, of combining certain elements into the greater and grander whole with design and vision and purpose. So it is purpose and idea and creativity that brought you into being. It would do you well, do you honor then, for you to bring something else into being in the same way in the most creative way, in the most purposeful way, in the most loving way. And so recognize that not all creative or successful ideas began with the deep money pockets. So if money had not been invented and yet you wish this idea to come forward, what other valuable thoughts what other merits does this have on its own? What other ways of attracting to it the resources, the valuable resources that it or you need? Some of these may very well be money. Some of them may very well have the monetary resource associated with these. And yet it cannot be the only one. In our next step then, determine whether the project or the idea is the true goal, is it the true object of your desire, or is it a placeholder for something else, something else that you have either not considered yet or not accomplished yet. Many times humanity has become accustomed to making substitutions. Well. I cannot have that thing or the life that I really wanted to have, so I'll settle for this. So just as money has no value but what it is assigned, those things that you either settle for or do not truly value or do not truly want, these things also have less value. Therefore, they will be less creative. If they are placeholders for something or someone else, then at least tell the truth of the matter. I want that. In the meantime, I am having this, I am working with this, but it is that which I want. That is my goal. Now the value in this is that you will not discount those things that you have. It will allow you to see them for what they are. Perhaps they are a stepping stone to something else and so they have that value then you may say it has relative value value in the now value toward associating the goal or getting me toward that goal and so when you begin to acknowledge where you are what you have where you wish to go whether it is a project or an idea then you will begin to be in the present moment again when you are living or settling with those things that are not the goal, then in some way you are living in the past for the moment which you settled for it or the moment in which you gave up a dream or a goal or like that. At the most you will have satisfaction. You will not have the fulfillment that comes in the moment. Now at times there is a gift associated with this step as well. For you may find that you did not settle after all. That the lofty goal that you were certain that you wanted was a fine idea, but not for you. It was a fine idea as outlined at another time in your life. It was a fine idea as outlined by someone else, but not necessarily you. And so it is well to assess 
What is the truth of the matter? What is the true object of your desire? And perhaps at times you will discover that you actually already have it. Then you can perhaps enhance it or remake it. It becomes creative again. Once you accept that that is what you have actually chosen, you place yourself in creativity again. And there you begin to find new avenues of expression. All that we have spoken of thus far can have money or not. We are speaking of value, creativity, project, ideas, the past, the present, the future, satisfaction and fulfillment. It is an experiment, it is an experience, and it is one that I encourage to you to play with where you can. Next you will experiment then with bringing other things of value into your life regardless of whether they have money basis or not. Some things have, as we have said earlier, money at the root of it. The root of it requires a little bit of starting capital, but that is not what the project is about. Or perhaps the value is somewhere along the line. And until you experiment with what other things in your life have value, you will not be able to bring the thing or the project to fruition or fulfillment. So at times this experiment will seem to take you elsewhere. It will seem to take you farther away from the thing that you are certain that you want. But that will not be the case at all. First you must determine what is in your life. At times you must align those things, not simply to give them priority or to list them in a certain way, but to see what is their relative health, to assess the wellness of an idea. You may need to plump it up a little bit with some creativity before you can take it forward. Or that thing, that project that you may want may ask you to attend to a few other side notes before proceeding because it will bring fulfillment to the greater whole. And this is the step where you will determine that as well. As you begin to determine this, then it would be important for you to observe whether it is truly money that you want or the thoughts and things that you perceive that money can buy or bring to you. Is it truly the project or the idea that you truly want or is it the money, enough money, more than enough money to bring that project or other projects like it forward? So here you will determine again what is the relative value of the moment or the day or the timeline. Then you will begin to say, is it that I do not have the money for the project or do I not have the time to bring the project together because I have many other projects that I am juggling in the same moment. So now you will determine, do you simply want money to fund projects and ideas or is there one favorite, something that is very important, that you have denied yourself, then you will determine is it money that needs to be reprioritized or aligned or drawn in this way or another, taken from something else, given to something, do you wish to keep other projects for yourself, sit them on the sideline, turn them over to others, here is the place where you will perhaps determine this as well. Lastly, as part of this grand experiment, I will say to you simply, imagine a society, a culture that is cash-less or does not have money as you know it now. Imagine that in this time or this place it is your good name, your good idea that gives to you credit in order to buy or have or do. So it is not what is in your wallet it is not what is in your bank account. All of the credits associated with you are for deeds well done, thoughts that you have allowed yourself to complete, not even completed projects that you have brought all the way to fruition instead of having left them unfinished. Thoughts, complete thoughts, complete ideas, finished statements of truth, and discovery. Imagine that in this culture or this society all of these good traits you are credited with 
so that the more creative thoughts that you think, the more of something like a currency but not a currency is credited to your name or to your titles, something that you can draw upon. So it is not limiting like money that either arrives or does not or is spent all too quickly or has less and less meaning. Instead it is your self, your being and the more you think of yourself, the more highly you think of yourself, the more is credited to you so that you are a credit to the day, to your family, to your relationships, you are a credit to your idea, you are a credit to the fine mind that you have that is well developed and expansive, you are a credit to your spirit, to your soul, for you listen intuitively to the guidance, the creative guidance that it offers to you. You are a credit to your body and listen to its nurturing guidance as well, supporting it, partnering with it. You are a steward, a shepherd of your own life and you are credited for this. And as you notice just how much credits are already in your name, begin to notice others in your life. Notice others that are also crediting to themselves but rarely noticing. Notice those in your life that are most abundant in their nature. Is it simply because they were fortunate enough to have earned monies or titles or degrees? Where does credit truly come from? Where is good credit due? Where will fulfillment come from? So this is an exercise only. It is an experiment and no more than that. You will not arrive at a right or wrong place in this. But as you begin to play with this model of life, you will begin to see that money is more easily attracted, attractable than you may have thought that it is. Because it is not hard work or a certain salary that does it. It is creativity, it is the ingenuity of the mind, it is the ability to want and draw to oneself satisfaction and fulfillment in the present moment. Money can expand in all moments, but the ability to know, interact with money in such a way as it becomes creative, that is how to play with it a bit. Imagine that money is in your favorite book or page. It is paper, after all, that you could simply take all of your favorite books, tear out a page, tear out your favorite page, and have it convert to currency. Why not? Creativity was put into those books. Now they are living words when you read them. And so money becomes living also when you spend it, when you draw it to you, and when you infuse your projects with it. So we will pause with the subject here, but we will continue with it, for I tell you that it is a subject that would bring blessings to many if it were better understood on the planet, and because, as we will see, there are many changing faces and factors where money and abundance and richness is concerned. And so our next segment will take this deeper and further and hopefully be of good use of good service to you until the next moment brings us together i bid you good day <laughs>